In this video tutorial, we're going to look at some specific applications of the steady flow energy equation, and we're also going to see how our steam tables can be used in order to determine specific enthalpies at different temperatures and pressures for steam. So in this first example, we're going to be analysing a condenser. And the role of a condenser is to take steam and condense it into water. In effect, what the condenser is doing is removing enthalpy from the steam so that it's able to change state and go back to being water or go back to being saturated steam with a lower dryness fraction. So in the example that we have here on the left hand side, we have superheated steam entering our condenser at a pressure of 5 bar and a temperature of 450 degrees C. And then exiting our condenser, we have saturated water at 2 bar. For reference, in the top right hand corner, we have our steady flow energy equation. Now we're going to make some assumptions here. First of all, a condenser doesn't add or remove any mechanical power. All it does is remove heat energy. Therefore, power can be ignored in the steady flow energy equation. Also, we're going to assume that the condenser is horizontal, so we're going to have no change in potential energy. And we're also going to assume that the velocity of the steam entering and exiting the condenser is the same, so we're going to have no change in kinetic energy. It isn't uncommon to ignore the change in potential energy and change in kinetic energy in this type of system, because those changes are going to be relatively small when compared to the change in enthalpy. The reason behind that is because specific enthalpy values for steam are very high, as we'll see as we go through this question. So if we want to determine the amount of heat energy removed from the steam, phi, then we need to determine the change in enthalpy per second. Now the change in enthalpy per second is the same as the mass flow rate times the change in the specific enthalpy. So we can determine our specific enthalpy values using our steam tables. We have a mass flow rate stated on the left hand side of 1.5 kilograms per second and therefore we can determine the amount of heat energy phi that's being removed by our condenser. So the first thing to do then is to determine our enthalpy values, first of all for the steam entering the condenser and secondly for the steam exiting the condenser. Now for the steam entering the condenser, we know we have superheated steam at 5 bar and 450 degrees C. So we're going to use our steam tables in order to determine the enthalpy H at 5 bar and 450 degrees C. At the exit to our condenser, we have saturated water at 2 bar. Therefore, H is going to equal the HF value at 2 bar. And once again, we're going to use our steam tables in order to determine that. So let's go to our steam tables now. First of all, to determine the enthalpy of the steam entering the condenser at 5 bar and 450 degrees C. And secondly, to determine the enthalpy of the saturated water exiting the condenser at 2 bar. So here we have our steam tables and the first thing that we're going to do is go to superheated steam at 5 bar. So we're going to need to scroll through the pages, first of all passing the saturated steam sections until we reach the smaller tables for superheated steam. We're looking for a pressure of 5 bar, so the first two tables here are for 0.06 bar and 0.35 bar as we see in the header of that table. Then we have 0.7 bar and 1 bar, 1.5 and 3 bar and eventually we get to 5 bar and 7 bar. So we have a pressure of 5 bar and we have a temperature of 450 degrees C. We're looking for the enthalpy that corresponds with 450 degrees C. So moving right we have specific volume, we have internal energy, and next we have the enthalpy. So the enthalpy of our steam entering the condenser is 3377 kilojoules per kilogram, or 3377,000 3, joules per kilogram. So we need to make a note of that value, and next we need to find the enthalpy of the steam exiting our condenser. Well, we said that exiting the condenser, we actually have saturated water at 2 bar. 
So if we go back to the tables at the top, which represent saturated water, and we're looking for a pressure of two bar. So at a pressure of two bar, over in the left hand column, we're looking for the HF value because we have saturated water that corresponds with that two bar value. So moving right along the column, we have temperature, we have specific volumes, then we have internal energies here, 504 and 2530. Next we have our enthalpies, and the enthalpy of the saturated water at 2 bar is 504.7. So once again, we need to make a note of that value. Let's return to our example with those values. So we said the enthalpy of the superheated steam at 5 bar and 450 degrees C was 3, 3, 7, 7 kilojoules per kilogram. And we said the enthalpy of the saturated water at 2 bar was 504.7 kilojoules per kilogram. So over on the right hand side then, our rate of heat transfer thigh equals the mass flow rate of 1.5 times the change in specific enthalpy. Now we have a choice here. We can either convert each of those to joules per kilogram by multiplying by 1,000, or we can leave them in kilojoules, remembering that that will give a thigh value or a rate of heat transfer in kilowatts. If we use kilojoules per kilogram, we get an answer in kilowatts. So we're going to do that for simplicity. We have a change in enthalpy, which would be represented by H2 minus H1, or the enthalpy of the steam exiting, 504.7, minus the enthalpy of the steam entering, 3377, giving us a value of thigh equal to minus 4308 kilowatts, because we used kilojoules per kilogram, and that's accurate to the nearest whole number. So minus 4308 kilowatts. The significance of this minus sign means we have heat energy leaving the system. And that's what we would expect from the condenser, as the condenser's role is to remove enthalpy or remove heat energy in order to condense the steam. Let's take a look at another example involving steam. So in this example, we're specifying that we have a rate of heat transfer from our condenser of 3.5 megawatts. To be technically accurate, we should specify that that's minus 3.5 megawatts because condensers remove heat energy from our thermodynamic system. The thing we're trying to calculate this time is the mass flow rate of the steam. In the bottom left hand corner, we've specified that we have saturated steam at 8 bar with a dryness fraction of 0.9 entering the condenser, and we have saturated steam at 8 bar and dryness fraction 0.2 exiting the condenser. So in this instance, we don't have superheated steam entering and we don't have water leaving. We have steam entering and we have steam leaving. The big difference here is the steam entering the condenser is drier than the steam exiting the condenser. If you like, the steam entering has a lower moisture content. And as we've seen in previous tutorials, the higher the dryness fraction, the higher the enthalpy. So as in the previous example, the condenser is removing enthalpy from the steam but it isn't removing sufficient energy or sufficient enthalpy in order to change the state of the steam. So in order to determine the enthalpy of the steam both entering and exiting the condenser, we need to use a formula, and that formula states that H equals HF plus X HFG. Now we can break that down a little bit further because HF is something we can determine from the steam tables, X is given, and HFG can be determined by doing HG minus HF. It's the difference between the enthalpy of the dry saturated steam and the enthalpy of the saturated water. And both of those values, HG and HF, can be determined from the steam tables. In our example here, our steam entering the condenser is at 8 bar, and our steam exiting the condenser is at 8 bar. Therefore, from our steam tables, we need to determine 
HF at 8 bar and we need to determine HG at 8 bar. We can then calculate the enthalpy of the steam entering the condenser and we can calculate the enthalpy of the steam exiting the condenser. So let's find HF and HG at 8 bar now. So here we are on our steam tables. The first page here uses temperature as a reference. If we scroll down until the left hand column is pressure, and we're looking for a pressure of 8 bar, and we need HF and HG at 8 bar. So here we have 8 bar in the left hand column, and tracking right, we go past our specific volume values, we go past our internal energy values, until we get to our enthalpy values, HF, we have 721.1, and HG, we have 2769. So we can take those two values, 721.1 for HF and 2769 for HG, and then we can calculate our two enthalpy values, both entering and exiting the condenser. So HG we said was 2769. Again, that's kilojoules per kilogram. And HF we said was 721.1 kilojoules per kilogram. But what we need to do is determine H entering the condenser and H exiting the condenser. So I'm going to call H entering the condenser H1 down here in the bottom left hand corner and H1 is HF plus X HG minus HF all at 8 bar there. H1 then is HF 721.1 plus X which is 0 0.9 HG minus HF HG 2769 HF is 721.1 giving us an enthalpy of the steam entering the condenser equal to 2564.21 And that's kilojoules per kilogram. Those are specific enthalpy values there. Let's clear some space and repeat for the steam exiting the condenser. So once again, we're using the same values of HF and HG because the steam exiting the condenser is also at 8 bar. The only difference is that our dryness fraction is 0 0.2. We're going to call this H2 for steam exiting. We have HF plus X. HG minus HF as we did before. HF is still 721.1. This time our dryness fraction is 0 0.2. HG is still 2769 and HF 721.1. Giving us a value H2 equal to 1130.68. Kilojoules per kilogram. So finally, we can determine our mass flow rate. If we refer to our original equation, we have phi, the rate of heat transfer, equals the mass flow rate times the change in enthalpy. So rearranging that by dividing each side by the change in enthalpy, we just get m dot equals phi divided by change in enthalpy. This time we're going to work in SI units because our units don't match. We have phi in megawatts and we have enthalpies in kilojoules per kilogram. So we need to make sure those units match. So we have m dot equals phi 3.5 megawatts or more specifically minus 3.5 megawatts is 3.5 times 10 to the 6 watts in SI units. Our change in enthalpy is H2 minus H1. Well, H2, we have 1130.68, but that's kilojoules per kilogram, so times 10 to the 3. And H1 for the steam entering the condenser 
2564.21. Once again, that's kilojoules per kilogram. So we need to include our times 10 to the 3 there. Now running that all through the calculator gives a mass flow rate m dot equal to 2.44 kilograms per second. So in this example, we've taken the rate of heat transfer from the condenser, we've taken the enthalpy at inlet and outlet to the condenser, and we've determined the required mass flow rate through the condenser. Next, we're going to look at a couple of examples for turbines. And in a turbine, we produce mechanical power, or we have power out rather than heat out. 